the biggest mistake people make is that make they don't make content for YouTube. And mm-hmm. I've been sitting on that one for weeks, thinking about that. And look at my content. I go, oh shit, he's right. I'm making, I'm putting content on YouTube, not YouTube. I'm not making content for YouTube. Yep, so, you're using it as an archive. Yep. Yeah, break down, break down the difference for me, and like yep. what the difference between on and for YouTube is. It's like, yeah, I even tell people, it's like, yeah, if I lose all my stuff, my hard drive, guess what? It's all on YouTube. It's storage. <laughs> some, and sometimes it's, it's kind of like storage for me as well. No, it actually, by the way, it's free storage. It's free storage. They're not limiting it's free, you. It's and free then, real estate. <laughs> and then, dude. If you if you upload, I know there's gonna be like noise happening. I'm sorry about that. On my my dad's weed whacking, but uh, so um, yeah. So if you uh, also if you upload a long form video to YouTube and then you download it after YouTube processes it, it's so much smaller. By the way, just as a little cheat code. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. But, YouTube, but yeah, YouTube will cut that shit down. It's nice, yeah. So I'll send that one to the guest, you know, so it'll be nice, quick and easy. But yeah, so dude, my freaking he really has to do the freaking blow. <laughs> dude, it's every day, it's blower. But um so so with YouTube, man, yeah. So basically I have a good case study for this, right? So I had a friend on my podcast, his name's Jack Singleton, he's my trainer. Okay, so he trains me, he sends me workouts, he's a bodybuilder, he's on steroids, he talks about it, he's jacked, he's awesome. I let, he's he's he has a mind for it, he has a master's degree, like he understands it. So we did an episode, right? It got 70 views mostly because we promoted it on our social media right mostly because because he has a following on 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 instagram and i've followed instagram right so i got 70 views probably last year or the year before then we did another one okay in this one i did a custom thumbnail that was like very specific i shot a picture just for the thumbnail specifically just like with like all staged and choreographed then i had the title picked out that i ran before ran by him beforehand beforehand the title is i asked a bodybuilder what steroids he does and so you know that's like think about that on youtube i asked a bodybuilder what steroids he does people just want to know like okay what did he say so i got the title i got the thumbnail and then the first minute of the video is him talking about this thing that's not a steroid, it's called SARMs. It's this thing that people use as, as like, instead of steroids, right? And so he's talking about, and a lot of people use it. So in that community, if you know it, you know it, right? So if you know, then you're gonna listen to it because you're like, oh, everybody on TikTok's talking about this, but they're promoting it, but this guy is looking at it the other way, right? So that's one example. The first one got 70 views, the next one got 400 views. So it's just, we're not in the thousands here, folks. We're getting there. I have a thousand subs, we're not that big yet. But just that factor itself, like, I can see the retention was better. I can see, obviously, the views are obvious. So that's my personal example. But if you just look at somebody's YouTube channel, you know if they're optimizing for it or if they're not. And I thought all my subscribers were gone. I thought I didn't have any more, and they were all from 12 years ago. It turns out they're there. I can see it in the stats. I wasn't creating videos, thumbnails, titles, and honestly, just content that was good enough for them to click. Because if you think about it, if you have a podcast, you're competing with Joe Rogan, Tom Segura, Burr Kreischer, fucking, uh, 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 you know, uh, every murder mystery. Like you're yep. competing with goddamn killers. They see your YouTube video and then they see a fucking world-class comedian son. Who are they clicking on? So that's why like my whole, I'm not saying my shit's great. I'm saying I'm trying. Um, but I'll add on to this, right. As the, you know, kind of final piece of this is I talk to a YouTube consultant. Like I talk to a guy who does this for a living. I, my channel doesn't, he wouldn't work with me. He wouldn't work with you. We're not there yet. You got to have five, 10, 15 K subs just to start to work with him. And he's $15,000 just to work with him. But yeah. he's spoke, he just, dude, he was like the nice, like just gave me the time of day and I can't thank him more for it. Um, and, and he taught me how to do it. Like he, well, he at least, you know, gave me 30, 40 minutes of pointers, but he said, title has to match the thumbnail, right? And then the thumbnail and title need to match the first minute. So you need to good deliver them what they're looking for in the first minute, but then allude to the rest of it, right? So there's no magic formula, dude. If you're trying to drive people to a, to a two hour anything, it's gonna be very difficult if it's not made by a, you know, yeah, if you're not a, uh, 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 yeah, a, a film company, right? But, but, um, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of the gist of YouTube, man. Most people, like when I sit down with clients, I'm like, what do you, you know, I say, what's your YouTube strategy? And they're like, I don't, I just upload, right? And I get the same amount of views every time, mostly 10 views. 